Today is March 28th, 2013, and we have a very interesting electromechanical tremolo here that uh, Doug is going to, to uh, describe for you. Yeah, David, uh, about six months ago in Vintage Guitar Magazine, they had a story about a very early DiArmond electromechanical tremolo unit. It was probably one of the first pedal devices for guitars. And uh, I thought, well, I'm going to bid on one on eBay and get one. And when the bidding went north of $500, I decided maybe it'd be best to make one. So starting with a clean sheet of paper, I just designed this unit and made it. And the way it works is there is a copper tank filled with a liquid. There's an electrode. There I am. Yeah. This is the little copper tank. This is the electrode going in. This is a plexiglass uh, lid for the tank, so it insulates the electrode from the copper tank. The copper tank is grounded through the green ground wire to uh, through the plug that connects this to the uh, AC wall unit. And when the unit rocks back and forth, the liquid will rise and actually short the electrode to the body of the tank and ground it so that when your guitar puts its signal out and it's going here to the amplifier we're going to have an alternate route to the little electrode that will be grounding the signal just like if I reached down and took the volume control of the guitar and moved it up and down and up and down in a perfectly rhythmic fashion. The other thing that was important here is that to have a variable speed control Oh, and one last thing before we turn it on, the difference, there's always this argument about what is vibrato and what is tremolo. Tremolo is when you vary the volume of a signal, vibrato is when you vary the pitch. The most common way that that's done is with the whammy bar in a guitar. You stretch the strings, make them vibrate at a different rate, and you actually change the frequency of the sound, the pitch. But I am going to be varying strictly the volume of the sound, so this really is a tremolo unit. I have a little diagram here of the volume before uh, going in and here's the volume after created by the rhythmic sloshing of the liquid inside the little tank. As you can see here, I just have, this is a fan speed control that's built in the bottom of it here and when I turn this on, it's going to start up and I've made a very tiny pulley driving a very large pulley so that I get the gear reduction to get this thing slowed down enough where it's not just thrashing away and frothing the liquid and creating just a, a, a mess of a signal. I want a smooth rhythmic signal. Now I've got this set, this is as fast as it goes. Then I can alter this down to where it is very slow. And if you want a real swampy type of tremolo, you'd run it really slow like this. If you want the more common type, you could run it in the middle, and then if you want um, a higher speed tremolo, you run the thing wide open like so. You can see the little tank, and you can imagine inside the water is frothing around, well actually hopefully not frothing, it's uh, sloshing around in here and grounding the little electrode every time it's down. The liquid then would be up on it. Uh, there's a big debate about what's the fluid you use in these tanks. And everybody said Windex, so I tried Windex. Unfortunately, the Windex uh, offers almost very little resistance. And you end up losing all your volume, and then the Windex froths, and you lose everything. So, and I don't know why they, everybody suggests Windex. I use distilled water. You get the minimum reduction in volume and a nice smooth uh, variation in your volume. Let's set it up, let's hook it up to an ohm meter and show exactly how this thing works uh, with an uh, analog meter. Okay, I'm going to turn it off, we'll plug in our meter here. I have a capacitor back here that cuts down a little bit on the extraneous noise and I'm going to jumper that, cap oh, jumper that capacitor here and hook it up. And now we're going to start this beast, and if you watch the, the variations in the resistance, I'll slow it down and look at that. That's as if I am rotating the volume control on the guitar at exact smooth intervals. You can see it exactly matches the, if that is, both of those are in the same 
field it's going to exactly match the oscillations of the tank and when I speed it up you'll see that the resistance appears to change I don't know if that has to do with the meters inability to respond quickly or if it really does change but you can see what the high speed fluctuation looks like and the really swampy low speed now really the, the thing its purpose is to change sound so let's hook it up to an amplifier and a guitar and in violation of numerous uh, petitions and restraining orders I will strum a few chords through this thing and we'll see how it sounds okay okay David we've got it hooked up now to the amplifier we're running the signal the guitar signal through the device uh, to be grounded rhythmically and reduce the volume electronic tremolos is that you can't slow them down enough. This one you can slow down too. Association with tremolo, but it throbs. Okay, David, uh, just wanted before we let the viewing audience loose here uh, to talk about the amplifier that the little tremolo was plugged into. This is one that I made at home just from scratch, and um, it's based on a very, very early Princeton chassis the 5F2A chassis, which is really more or less a Fender Champ with a tone control. Okay, and uh, then, and this is one of those tales that people don't believe, in a trash pail I found a original Jensen C10N speaker with the original cone and everything which is absolutely perfect for this amp. So you get the circuit is the exact circuit from the early 60s. It's the right speaker. Everything about it's right, and you get tone that's just, just phenomenal. And I put it in a particularly small case. I go for the two-tone look, uh, black uh, alligator on the back and sides, and then brown on the front with the nameplate, of course, to make it official. And uh, this has been just a wonderful amp, and it's uh, fairly light and uh, portable and a whole lot smaller than a Princeton which isn't easy to, to say actually but it is and it's been a wonderful amp. I'm very pleased with it. I hope everyone enjoyed listening to it. <laughs>